Good afternoon and a very warm welcome to all. I hope you all are doing well. Today is Thursday, 23rd March, 2023, and we are gathered here on this informal session of ICOM Family Forum. Uh, let me introduce myself first. I'm Sana Durrani from Lahore, Pakistan. I'm a visual artist, art conservationist, and also cultural first aider graduated from ICROM, Park College International course named Rethinking Disaster Risk Management for Cultural Heritage Collections. I will be moderating today's session. Uh, thank you so much for joining. Today, we have a guest speaker with us who is a specialist in strategy and development for traveling productions, exhibitions, programming, and international collaborations. I would like to introduce uh, Dr. Manon Delari, who is the CEO of TO, which is a global traveling exhibitions platform designed to help cultural institutions in search for new traveling in international exhibitions, partners, and resources. She is a specialist in strategy and development for traveling productions, exhibitions, programming, and international collaborations. Manon is an international specialist in traveling exhibitions with more than 15 years of experience in the strategic development of international exhibitions and collaborations. She supports with consultancy international institutions in the development of their exhibitions portfolio and exhibitions programs with science, natural history, art, design, popular cultures, and history exhibitions. As Director of Marketing and International Partnerships at Nomad Exhibitions, producer of international touring exhibitions, Manon developed the exhibitions portfolio, established partnerships, and managed business development for international tours. Uh, so I'm really excited to welcome Manon here. Hello, Manon. Welcome to this informal session. Uh, I'm really looking forward to know more about your journey so far. So to begin, please tell us something about yourself first, your hometown, your family, and then we'll begin. Thank you, Sana. Thank you so much for hosting me and welcoming me for this session. I'm very happy to be with you guys today and uh, to have the chance to talk about international traveling exhibitions with you. So I'm, I'm French. Um, I'm based in Brittany which is the western part of France, which is a very uh, a beautiful area with a coast all along uh, uh, the place. And uh, we, uh, I, I grew up here and did my studies here as well as traveling to the UK quite a bit to do some studies at the University of Edinburgh. All right. So, um... What, uh, actually, um, I'm, I was really curious to know, as I read your bio, that you have been to this, uh, you have 15 years of uh, experience of working in traveling exhibition. So how does it all started? Like, what motivated you? And what is art for you? Well, I, um, I studied politics and national uh, partnerships and projects development um, in in a, in a university at um, in my hometown in Brittany and I then went to Edinburgh to study history of art and Islamic history um, and when I when I studied all of this I realized how important art was um, as a form of expression um, to connect us uh, beyond um, the forms of languages and and um, to find a way of connecting people um, through creativity and 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 beauty. So I would say, um, in terms of art, what art is um, a human form of expression um, that enables uh, people to express um, themselves um, in in very different mediums. Um, and I think it's one of the most powerful mediums we have to connect with each other, with one another internationally as part of our international community. All right. And so, then in terms of what led me to work into um, traveling exhibitions, I started my career um, in the UK working for display case manufacturers. So I worked on international exhibitions, bringing uh, display showcases for very big projects um, internationally. And as part of this work, we worked a lot on traveling exhibitions, trying to bring uh, display cabinets that would be suitable for uh, traveling projects and and and, and displays, um, and I realized how 
beautiful it was to work in that industry, being able to connect people internationally from very different places, bringing uh, uh, curated content, scientific content to very different audiences and getting these teams together, working on new presentations, giving such a long and versatile life to scientific content and to collections uh, was fascinating. And that's uh, that's when I decided to, to try and work in that industry. And I, that's when I joined uh, Nomad Exhibitions or a producer of international exhibitions when the, at the very beginning when the company was created. Okay, so could you tell us more about your organization, TO, the Touring Exhibition Resources and why you have created this platform? Uh, TIO is a, is, a, is a global resource dedicated to international touring exhibitions, which we created three years ago with my business partner, Fabian Nier. Um, the idea for us was to bring together the community of international professionals who work in international touring exhibitions. So supporting on one side, the producers of international exhibitions, the so museums, art galleries, science centers, cultural institutions who produce um, exhibitions. So when I talk about traveling exhibitions, it can be just uh, an original collection and some content all the way to uh, a completely uh, a turnkey exhibition where you have all the displays which travel as well. And so we wanted to support the cultural institutions who create this content and try and help them find potential partners to give a life to that exhibition so that they could find partners who could host and present these exhibitions to their audiences. Um, and on the other side, the platform was created to support cultural institutions and art and museum professionals who are looking for content to present as part of their future programs. And the idea was to give them a, a one-stop resource where they could go and find uh, potential content in art, in design, contemporary cultures, um, history, and, and, uh, and contemporary art. Um, and as well, the idea was to bring these guys together as much as also them the nebula of specialist providers who can support traveling exhibitions producers and hosts in the development of their projects and mm -hmm. tours so all the people who can uh, um, bring services and solutions such as for instance uh, um, display equipment or, or curatorial support or logistics for instance who are very specific when it comes to traveling exhibitions so the idea was to give them a place where they could all meet find projects find potential partners and also find some ideas to to develop their their, their activity in exhibitions well, that's nice um, but how does it work concretely how can people who work in the museum engage with the platform yeah. they use it to support their exhibition activities mm -hmm. well um if, if, if I may, I can, I, I can actually maybe share my screen and show you uh, just the, 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 the way it works for the platform. Um, I'll show you. Uh, basically, we've designed it so that everybody who's online can find the platform and browse through the platform uh, in, in the most easy manner. Uh, you don't need to be logged in. It's, it's fully, um, fully accessible for people to browse through and discover the content. And basically, when you reach TIO, you can find all sorts of content to support people who are looking for content for their future programs. So for instance, here is the menu and you can find potential exhibitions. Uh, um, you can find uh, all these different labels here would lead you to specific content designed to support these professionals who work in our industry. So for instance, uh, we've got a directory of traveling exhibitions where you can find art, nature, popular culture, all the topics I mentioned to you before, science and technology. And you can very easily browse through these with specific filters. So you can select topics, you can select sizes, you can select availability date as much as budgets. We've got loads of very simple filters which will enable anybody browsing through the platform to very quickly narrow down to a selection of projects which can be relevant uh, for their programs and their, and their audiences. And basically you can explore a, a, a diversity of exhibitions from all around the world. We've got um, projects from uh, uh, more than 100 institutions and producers internationally, which are presented on the platform, um, more than 400 exhibitions, uh, which you can browse through. 
And you've got exhibitions from natural history museums, from science centers, from art galleries, um, and from cultural centers, as much as private producers, uh, which are presented and easy to find when you when you when you look through the platform. Um, exhibitions can be looked through as well as a um, potential for like a coming quick availability. So you can basically uh, decide how you sort out the projects and, and like, like here, for instance, like you click here on the last minute availability, that will enable you to see at a glance all the projects which will be available in the coming months. So that's a very uh, useful uh, way of finding projects for like a, a, a uh, an urgent need uh, of programming. Um, so that's the core of the platform is to really find a, a, a diversity of content. And, and you can see here, so that's a snapshot of what's happening today on the um, last minute page. And you can see um, science exhibitions from, from, from Canada. You can find uh, immersive exhibitions from France. Uh, from You can find um, uh, immersive exhibitions as well from, from Belgium um, and, 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 and from, from the US. And, and that's basically like giving you a, a very broad diversity. I can see Wonderland as well from, uh, from Australia. So it's, it's a really good way of uh, trying to identify projects which match exactly what you need right now in terms of programming. Beyond the fact that you can find potential exhibitions on the platform, um, it's also designed for you to find potential partners. So we've got a directory of people um, who, um, who, who all the stakeholders who are registered with the platform are listed with uh, specific areas of skills. Um, so you can find them with a the area of expertise uh, that they can bring to a traveling exhibition project to support either the producers or the cultural institutions who host these traveling productions. And so when you browse through these uh, areas of, of expertise, like cultural engineering, like contract to work, collections management, exhibition design, exhibition production, you will find peers, you will find international uh, um, organizations who have the ability in-house to provide that kind of support for international traveling exhibitions project. So it's really designed for people to find content as much as partners. And whenever you, you actually identify a project which is of interest for your organization, you can contact directly the producing party uh, to ask for more information and connect. So it's really organized for people to uh, connect in a very easy manner. So can you- uh, Beyond this, we also- Yeah? No, 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 please continue. continue. Go on, Sana. Uh, I just wanted to say that we also make it a, a very um, living resource. So there's new content published uh, on a daily basis on the platform. And we created a journal where we share uh, content um, dedicated to uh, international travel exhibition practice. Uh, so we have, uh, we share there some case studies uh, like the one on, on Game On we just published, which is a, a major exhibition produced by the Barbican Immersive, Immersive in London. Uh, and it's a major exhibition uh, dedicated to um, um, video game uh, history, um, which has been touring for more than 20 years. So the, the, the team here is sharing how they, they how talking about the longevity, giving into the longevity of such an exhibition. And so we share uh, interviews as well, conversations with uh, international stakeholders who share some best practice and some insight into what they've been doing uh, in international traveling exhibitions. We have a specific focus on um, sustainability. So sustainable development practice uh, in international touring, uh, sharing uh, uh, insights and case studies and ideas and tools uh, to support international stakeholders in the development of sustainable development practices um, um, in the touring practice. So in the way exhibitions are being conceived and developed and produced, and also in the way these exhibitions are taught internationally, trying to lower the, 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 the environmental impact of traveling exhibitions and develop really strong uh, social um, and, and economic impact for, for, these, uh, for these productions. So we've got a page dedicated to sustainability, 
on which you can also find um, content, exhibitions which address biodiversity, uh, preservation, uh, um, um, extinction and, and preservation of species uh, and, and the development of traveling exhibitions with, with a more uh, um, sustainable approach, basically. And so in that journal, we also regularly publish uh, job opportunities um, as much as um, event information and also we share uh, what we call the call. It's when, whenever international stakeholders need something and they'd like to ask the community about it, for instance, if Thunder for a specific production they're working on, or if they have um, the need for a new partner, like a co-production partner, for instance, or a specialist provider, they can share their requirement on this board uh, so that everybody uh, can see uh, that this is there is this need uh, in a specific location internationally and see if they could find a way to collaborate on new projects. So we really try and bring together the community with these, these three core resources, which are um, the directory of exhibitions, the directory of potential partners, and the journal where we share a content and news uh, very regularly. Okay. <clears throat> well, um, it seems like a very well organized platform for um, those interested artists and uh, curators as well to approach. Uh, and uh, But I was just uh, asking that time, could you just give us some more examples of exhibitions presented on the platform? Sure, sure. Um, I've, um, I've, I've uh, just to give you like a snapshot of a, a, a beautiful um, posters of exhibitions which are presented on TO. Uh, I've, I've prepared actually uh, just a snapshot of exhibits that we uh, we have on the platform. Obviously, we've got more than four hundred uh, productions, so feel free to go and, and browse to 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 see uh, further ideas. But I'm going to share um, some some of these projects. Uh, with just to give you a, a, a flavor of the type of productions you could find there. Um, this one is called um, Dinosaurs Among Us. It's, a, um, it's an event produced by the American Uni Museum of Natural History. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very interesting format because it's a panel exhibition. So it's a very easy to use product project where you have, um, basically it's like a digital format and you can download it um, and then you can print it wherever you are, you are internationally and then you will you can install yourself so it's a very easy uh, approach which the American Museum of Natural History has developed um, um, part of their traveling to for you a fresh perspective on the uh, so really uh, science and natural history production. Sorry, um, I uh, Another example, if you, if you guys have any questions, yes? Sorry, I got interrupted um, and the recording has started again. Please carry on, continue. Sure. Um, I see that uh, people have been asking you about the link. Um, to go to the to the plant of diverse. Um, it's an exhibition which has been produced by the museum. It's dedicated to uh, biodiversity. It it invites visitors to discover uh, the Earth's biodiversity uh, from uh, the appearance of life on Earth to today's biodiversity and uh, the current crisis. So. With this exhibition, visitors can learn about uh, how species uh, have been threatened. It, it explains um, and it also reflects on the possibilities of action uh, to, to, to improve the current situation and think together collectively about a better future uh, for our planet. Um, this one is like, it's a, it's a different approach in terms of uh, what, what is created. It's a turnkey exhibition. So basically when you welcome that kind of exhibition, 
It comes with uh, the display cases, the interactives. There's even like an, an immersive projection uh, room, which is uh, possible uh, with this exhibition. And you also get some um, a few specimens, uh, which help tell the story uh, of biodiversity. So it's a, it's a it's a it's a it's a brand new exhibition which is currently presented uh, in Luxembourg um, in Europe and will then continue its international tour. Um, another exhibition uh, which is presented on the platform is called Mangasia, um, Wonderlands of Asian Comics. It's an exhibition by Barbican Immersive, so the same uh, uh, cultural organization who produce. Uh, who, who did the, 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 the game on uh, exhibition and uh, the article you can read on the platform. This exhibition gives uh, visitors a journey uh, through the art of comics across Asia. Um, it basically addresses the topic from historical roots all the way to contemporary uh, um, uh, culture and digital resolutions. Um, so going from contemporary comic cultures and traditional graphic narrative art forms, and, and it will bring it brings in um, elements from um, India, the, the Philippines, Indonesia, China, Korea, and Japan, um, and it's it's a very uh, strong design uh, environment with more than five hundred original uh, artworks and pieces presented as part of the exhibition. To give you an example, and this this would be like a, a bigger production. The one before would be like the first one would be like maybe two hundred square meters. The second one can range from so impact would be two hundred to five hundred square meters. This one is more like a seven hundred uh, to a thousand square meter uh, experience for visitors. Uh, another completely different uh, example of exhibition, uh, which is um, available for international presentations, is Fragile, uh, an exhibition which is uh, produced by Univers Science, uh, which is a, a leading science institution in France who, who produce um, many um, international exhibitions. And they have a range which is dedicated, and that's quite rare, uh, dedicated to young, very young children. So like two to five, six years old, with the possibility for everybody in the family to also enjoy the exhibition, but they have a particular attention to these young audiences. And Fragile is one of these exhibitions, which is um, basically low tech and addresses a, 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 a topic of science in a manner which can engage with, with small children. And this one, for instance, uh, brings, it, it uses narration. So basically it tells a story with little characters which, which kids can engage with and they can discover through that story and, and things that happen, the concept of fragility uh, throughout the exhibition and the whole idea of repair, repairing something that has been uh, damaged uh, uh, because, and it's something that is fragile, basically. Um, this one is uh, 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 basically taking children on multiple adventures to share a concept of, of science. And they've got several exhibits like this. Uh, for instance, they've got another one which is dedicated to play huts, where kids can enjoy little huts uh, in, a, in a very creative uh, format, in a very uh, exploratory uh, environment. For all these uh, producers, you will see on the platform that uh, they all have um, a, a profile where you can find all their uh, all their exhibitions on the same page, and then you can click on the page, and it will take you to um, the different projects that you can be of interest, basically. To give you um, uh, another example, Talking Brains uh, is a production uh, by the Museo de la Ciencia, Cosmo uh, Caixa, which is an institution which is part of uh, the La Caixa Foundation uh, in Spain. And this exhibition uh, exhibits our brains uh, uh, from the point of view of its linguistic functions. Uh, so it's, it's kind of uh, providing a scientific approach to languages and, and it stresses uh, uh, psychological as much as biological uh, insights. And here visitors can basically explore uh, interactive exhibits that will look at uh, linguistic diversity and the evolution of language and, and the brain and how we all learn 
languages. So it's with uh, activity and also with a reproduction of fossils, which enable people to, to connect and engage with the topic. There's even uh, um, a reality um, experience part of, of, of that exhibition. And that's that's a uh, uh, that's a uh, tour project which is being toured by the American um, with natural history who support uh, the foundation of the touring. That was like a lot of uh, uh, that, that was like science uh, focused as much as uh, uh, art uh, focused. And and now uh, moving on to a completely different um, example. Uh, this is like a, a, an immersive projection uh, exhibition. Uh, we've seen in the past five years, and especially in the past couple of years, uh, the, the fast development of immersive environment uh, built with very uh, uh, um, actions uh, um, uh, going on around internationally. From, uh, dedicated to art or other areas of popular culture and of history. Grand Palais Immersive is an institution in France uh, which is a, a producer of digital uh, uh, immersive and interactive uh, traveling exhibitions uh, as access to a very broad uh, um, scientific uh, resources in, in, in France, basically. and they came uh, with leading partners, for instance, this exhibited to the art of uh, uh, has been created with the Musha uh, for, 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 for to the work as much as the stories, the a legacy of Alphonse Michel and also a great insight into art new environment. The exhibition has just opened uh, in Paris, so it's, it's a brand new production which will then uh, tour internationally. Um, uh, um, so it's a very immersive but also also interactive format, uh, immersive exhibition, and um, uh, they, they, they have also just closed an exhibition dedicated to Venice, um, the city in Italy. Uh, another approach seen with the Lasco International Exhibition, you might have heard of the word heritage site, the last cave uh, in France, by the actual cave. And so people can walk. Yeah. So I was asking you as a, uh, in this traveling exhibition world, what do, you think, yeah, what do you think are some key trends and challenges right now? Um, I, 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 there is like a, a strong push in terms of diversification. Uh, we see that uh, uh, there's more and more different types of traveling exhibitions being produced and developed in terms of uh, uh, topics and themes, uh, uh, a growing uh, variety of projects which are being made available internationally with uh, a growth, particularly in the popular culture, uh, um, Area of uh, a thematic area, but also uh, art uh, topics and science topics, and art and science blending together uh, uh, with very, very interesting productions being uh, developed at the moment. Um, beyond the diversification in terms of topics, we see a strong uh, creativity and innovation in the type of experiences which, which are being developed. Um, with uh, um, experiences which now integrate in a more and more uh, um, 
subtle manner, uh, the technology, uh, managing to embrace the, the, the incredible uh, technological innovations which have been uh, developed over the past decade and integrate this as part of the development of exhibitions um, to support uh, the, 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 the stories and the nar narratives uh, and engage with audiences. So no, not using technology for the sake of technology, but really trying to embrace technology to be part and to be a really good medium to connect with a very large diversity of audiences um, um, from very different backgrounds and from all generations, uh, uh, knowing that some uh, engaging with like very small uh, children, engaging with uh, teenagers, engaging with young adults, it's, it's all, the complexity is always very different. And so we see the very strong creativity in terms of the way how, uh, how um, international producers are managing to embrace technology to engage with these audiences. Um, so diversity in terms of formats, diversity in terms of topics, but also a diversification and, and a growth uh, in terms of international stakeholders who are involved in the production and hosting of international touring exhibitions. And um, there are uh, uh, like le leading big international organizations who produce and who have been producing for a very long time, but we also have now newcomers um, um, from big institutions all the way to smaller cultural institutions who are getting engaged with traveling exhibitions and producing traveling exhibitions because you don't need to be uh, um, a big museum with a big collection to, 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 to produce traveling exhibitions. Um, uh, you, when you have scientific uh, teams and you have creativity, People come up with amazing concepts that can tour all the way from a panel exhibition sharing stories all the way to like a big turnkey exhibition sharing displays, collections um, and interactivity. So that's that's a very vivid, uh, dynamic and diversified world. We, we, we're, and, and I think we're experiencing a very interesting moment now uh, with this diversification. Well, um, as you know that there are all other platforms also like NFTs, I was very much like, it was a new thing for me as well as an artist because when I was introduced to this platform NFT. So I was wondering how does it work? How we, how, uh, we will be able to sell our work over there? So it took time for me also to understand the whole process that how, it, but we need to also upgrade us and update us according to the technology and how things are moving faster these days. Um, but uh, what is coming up next? Please tell us about uh, your uh, future projects for TO. When is your next event or any further plannings you are doing? Um, so one key area of reflection for us is sustainability. So we are uh, planning to continue to nurture our focus on sustainable practice on the platform with our page dedicated to uh, um, uh, challenges and, and ideas uh, in that realm. Uh, and so we're, we're, we're aiming at uh, developing uh, and sharing case studies, um, insights and tools to support uh, the reflection uh, about how can we make sure we develop relevant traveling exhibitions uh, which um, will have the best impact uh, when it comes to the environment and 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 the social social uh, as much as a, a biodiversity environment um, so that's a curia focus for us um, but also um, um, in terms of um, in terms of events um, what we, we we've, we've done an event in Paris in January uh, which we will do next year again which is called the touring exhibitions pavilion where um, international stakeholders can come and spend time together producers and cultural institutions who are looking for exhibitions can get together for two days in Paris uh, and there's presentations of international exhibitions that's in January but our next event is called uh, Tio Live uh, it's happening on the 11th of May it's an online event this one um, where basically we get together and there's a keynote presentation um, I'll share with you uh, the, the the information with my screen. Um, there's a, a keynote presentation uh, which um, 
this year. We'll be sharing the results of a big, big piece of research we've, uh, we've done with um, um, our partners, um, Culture Connect, um, which is a consultancy based um, in the UK. We did a big research on the future of traveling exhibitions. So um, with a big survey, we asked people uh, internationally, people who produce, people who promote, people who host traveling exhibitions, what is their view on the key challenges we're facing now and the key trends uh, which are um, um, coming up right now in the traveling exhibitions world, basically. So we will present these, uh, the results of this big piece of research uh, as part of a keynote presentation. And after that, there will be a marketplace of exhibitions where international producers uh, from international cultural institutions will come to the stage basically online and present uh, uh, exhibitions uh, which have been produced in the, in the past few months. There will be more than, I think, more than 25 producers will be presenting um, uh, new exhibitions as part of this uh, of this uh, event. After the after everybody has been presenting, everybody's got two minutes. Uh, there will be the possibility for people who attend the event to actually meet with them in dedicated room uh, if they've got any questions about exhibitions that have been presented uh, during the marketplace. It's a, it's a free event. Uh, it's a free registration. Anybody who works in international exhibitions is welcome to join us uh, to for this session. It lasts. Um, two and a half hours uh, for the, the, the keynote, the marketplace, and the potential, uh, the possibility to meet with producers after. Sana, you are yes. new. Sorry, can you also share it um, in, in our chat box so our participants can also save the details and then join it later? Yes, sure, sure, I'll, uh, I, will, uh, I will do that. Okay, and uh, yes, yes. Uh, well, um, I'm going to join it for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it was so interesting the whole uh, discussion, the whole um, like uh, the, the different aspects you were telling were so much connected to what I want to do, and I also I'm really interested to have such a traveling exhibition. But we always hesitated because we are not aware of such uh, uh, possibilities or maybe such platforms. So there, there, there are those are available. Um, but thank you so much for letting us know, and I must appreciate it's such a good initiative for encouraging emerging artists, museum professionals who need such platform. And I'm sure that uh, it, this will be much beneficial for interested curators and artists and other people uh, for who are seeking such opportunity to uh, like go through it and explore more and then come up with their own projects or ideas. So I would also like to ask uh, my participants uh, if they have any questions or anything they want to ask to our guest speaker. anything related to the exhibition, anything related to um, your curies, anything. Okay, uh, I may ask uh, Sana, thank you so much for uh, sending me the link so I would really engage myself in this opportunity. I um, really, uh, uh, I will thank the uh, presenter that you have presented your point of view very clearly. And uh, although we are not from the same dialect or language, but we could really understand what you, you were trying to explain. So um, uh, my questions are very uh, basic questions related to exhibitions and stuff, or maybe we will be engaged in later on in the projects um, along with, uh, we can do some projects and are together, I think. Sure. And uh, the, uh, I want to know that if we plan some international exhibition, the, uh, what would be the, time uh, uh, timeline and how we will design in a certain time and what would be the resources how we have to uh, uh, you know plan the resources for a certain exhibition and uh, and uh, would you like to be um, uh, it on the same um, same title or uh, uh, or in the 
uh, or it it can be a variety of work by different artists to present it internationally. Uh, thank you so much. This is my question. Thank you so much, Dr. Minatza. I, um, I, 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 heard, I, I didn't hear the end of the question, so I'm, I'm going to answer on the timeline and resources, and then maybe I, I'll ask you again for the, for the end because it's been okay. pretty on my side. Uh, in oh. terms of timeline, it's very varied. Uh, some projects are being developed uh, in a, in a, with like a long period of time uh, in, in like a traditional approach, if I may say, uh, where people will have like three, four years to develop a traveling exhibition and um, oh. in terms of, you know, developing the content and finding partners before it actually goes on tour. Uh, but what we notice, and, and especially since the COVID period, is the contraction of the, the timelines for pro projects, uh, which means that now um, some exhibitions are being conceived, uh, developed, produced, and uh, toured within 18 months sometimes uh, and and we've seen it as short as a year which is a, which is not necessarily a good thing you know because it, it puts a lot of pressure on teams and it's all about then you know the resources you have to deliver the project but there is definitely a contraction of uh, of the timelines uh, and and we see that as well in the way people ask us about their programming uh, we get more and more inquiries for exhibitions for next year so basically the way people do their programming is now many institutions continue to, to plan ahead and say oh yeah yeah we, we we're now planning 2027 2028 but occasionally it does happen that things change and they will need something for next year and some institutions are just pro organizations are programming this way now and within two years of, of um, of uh, horizon so that's definitely a change in the way the timelines are, are being managed and it has an impact uh, on the on the the teams who are producing in terms of um, resources it really varies but it is obviously from the, the panel exhibition all the way to the big productions the resources required are very different uh, but it is critical to really consider from the very beginning of the project the resources required uh, for the development of the traveling exhibition uh, in a very sought out manner, because it's like uh, you often you would think of the, just the top of the iceberg and, and see, okay, we will need a, um, a curator and, and, and a registrar and it will work, but uh, it, it takes a lot of time uh, to establish a, a tour basically. So you would need that scientific work, uh, but it, the scientific work needs to have this international uh, project planning in mind as well, making sure the content will be uh, suited for international audiences as much as uh, local audiences if you're planning to present in your, for your audiences locally as much as uh, find international partners. Uh, but beyond that, um, the, the actual work of finding partner is, is almost a full-time job itself. Uh, so having somebody in the team who has the ability to go out there communicate with potential partners from a very early stage actually you know when you can have like a co-curated exhibition it's it's amazing like co-productions uh, are, 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 are a, a very desired um, mode for these international exhibitions <laughs> everybody's angle and it's so rich it's it, it's it's a complex organization but it's so rich the result of that kind of uh, of uh, development is, is is well worth it so having on board the the it's somebody who will be able to go out there, find potential partners uh, who, and, and, and give visibility uh, for the project um, internationally or in the territories that you wish to work with is, is very important uh, to have on board. And it's quite rare actually to have somebody like that uh, um, as part of the teams. All right. Um, um, uh, may I ask further? Yeah, sure. Oh, anybody else? <laughs> uh, I um uh, I have some. Um, I want to understand that. Uh, do you mean by traveling exhibition that it will be displayed more than one place, or uh, just uh, traveling from one uh, uh, country to another, or uh, or 
this is my one question. The second question is this, that is this possible that if we are exhibiting something here in Lahore, Pakistan, and that can be at the same time can be showed uh, at uh, another place. So what would be the dynamics and uh, uh, what, uh, what do you think about that? Sure. Um, in terms of uh, locations, uh, 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 a traveling exhibition is, for me, uh, talking about just defining the concept, is the idea of bringing uh, uh, some content, some curated content to another location uh, from where it originates, basically. So um, if okay. it goes to just one location, it is already a traveling exhibition because you're bringing your scientific content to another audience. Uh, and it can be within, you know, it can be 30 miles away and it can be on the other side of the world. It's really the idea of sharing uh, the, 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 the content. And it can be just content, but it can be also collections. You know, it, it is different layers and it could be, you know, all the way to bring everything uh, uh, to an international location. Having in mind that it's not... It's very, you could never say it's exactly the same exhibition because when it goes to another venue, it's addressed to a different audience. It's welcomed by another creative team. And so there's always a dialogue with the partner. And that's also, you know, what makes this job so amazing. It's that dialogue with the the, the, the creatorial partners and, and the creatorial hosts uh, who will contribute to make the, the exhibition a very unique new exhibition presented as part of their venue and, and, and addressed to their local audiences. So it gives a, a, a really a new life to, to some content that was created at your institution. Um, in terms of presenting simultaneously exhibitions, yes, this is definitely a possibility. And it's a, it's a very interesting um, model, actually, in, in terms of uh, international collaboration, seeing your project simultaneously coming live in different mm -hmm. locations internationally. It's making us feel so connected and so close to each other. In a way, I think that in terms of international dialogue, it's, it's an amazing uh, approach. And it, it has been done. It is being done. Um, and what's interesting is uh, that you can do it with content, um, but you can also do it with collections because sometimes you will address the same content and same topic and each institution will bring in their own collections, pieces of their own collections to tell the story, to contribute to tell similar stories in different locations. So it's kind of giving like a, a multilingual, multi-creative angles to, us, to, to, to the same topics. So that's definitely something that's uh, possible and I think we should will. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Any more questions? Um, Melon, I need your email if you want to give me. Uh, sure, absolutely. I'll put it in the in the conversation. If any any question uh, left, then I ask by email. Yeah, you don't hesitate to to write to me. Absolutely, okay. I'll be I'll be very happy to to answer. Yeah, and, and that's the way that's the way the platform is built actually you know you you browse through you 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 discover things but you can always then contact us if you don't find what you need on the platform because we might have an answer okay thank you very much and very good your presentation i i am really enjoyed and very fruitful for us and uh, really uh, we have artists a group of artists i'm sure uh, it's uh, wonderful for us in future to connect with you and your organization. Thank you so much. I very much look forward to that. Thank you. Thank you. Raheem, you're, you're on mute. You're still on mute. Can you unmute yourself? It's on mute. Okay. Yes, it's on mute. It was really interesting conversation, both a new thing that uh, like uh, NFT and the virtual reality in Pakistan, even maybe in, in the internationally, that's the new thing which come in front of all the artists. And uh, so I have uh, some questions. If we join, like uh, my work is I'm working on the on the microscope. You know very well my work, like uh, I work on the bees and flowers and 
uh, mostly my paintings is related with the nature. So I really love to join that uh, this organization. And uh, so how can they help us? Uh, like if, if we want to come there, how they uh, like in Pakistan, that's totally different. Yeah. that uh, the curator and the galleries uh, when you approach with them and uh, they that's totally different from this organization and from the internationally so how can they they help us and uh, how can we con connect with them uh, as an artist, you can basically join the platform. There's a, there's a membership to become a member of the platform, and you can present your art, your 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 artworks, um, as like as an exhibition. Basically, if you've curated uh, an exhibition, you can present it on the platform, and you can present yourself as well as an artist. Um, a good way of uh, connecting with international institutions um, is certainly to share your story in a way. So for instance, if you were to write um, an article uh, about your, your artistic approach, uh, which would give an insight into the uh, your, your creative developments and the stories you're trying to tell uh, with your exhibition is a good way of engaging with uh, um, potential uh, hosting partners. And obviously uh, trying to contact them as well directly uh, and you and you can you know you can contact some of them uh, via the platform too is always the best way you know sharing a presentation of your work and sharing um, um, an introduction to what you could bring to their audiences and their institution is also uh, the, the the best way to engage with potential partners who could host your your exhibition thank you so much thank you Rini. thank you so much any any further questions by anyone? Ryan, don't hesitate to send me a, a, you know, an email uh, about your work and I'll be happy to connect. Thank you, thank you so much. I love to share my work with you and further for information and guidance. Thank you so much. Thank you, please. All right, uh, so if there are no further questions, I would ask, uh, uh, Doctor, uh, sir, sir, just, excuse me. Just wait a second. My cat is here. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, cat. <laughs> okay, let me show it to you then. Yeah, please. <laughs> oh, so cute. Okay. Really cute. <laughs> was it really really dying and I was ignoring it has a really beautiful color <laughs> she wants to be an artist too <laughs> she, she she doesn't like to be neglected that's why she's just <laughs> parent <laughs> anyways um, if there are no further questions so I would ask uh, Sir Javed to just uh, um, share his thoughts on this talk and uh, his opinions Sir, Sir Javed, are you with us? Yeah, uh, thank you, Sana. I think, uh, yeah, most of the things you see uh, has said are already known to, uh, perhaps already known to people, our people, but uh, definitely then a, an expert eye is an expert eye. So, so, so she has given her view, views very uh, elaborately and uh, we believe that uh, Pakistan and uh, France can collaborate in this regard and can manage uh, inter-artist exhibitions. Uh, so uh, the exhibition should be in France and then there'll be a France artist exhibition should be in Pakistan. So uh, we will uh, contact to the uh, embassy and uh, we will try that through uh, that embassy it and foreign office, our foreign office, it should be managed officially. And uh, the TO should work on this uh, as a stakeholder uh, with ICOM Pakistan and uh, ICOM Family Forum. So uh, another thing is uh, Dr. Isama, perhaps Dr. Isama is here? No, I guess. Dr. Isama, can you hear me? Dr. Isama is there. Okay. So, okay. 
stop uh, he might be uh, busy in some other he was telling me that he has another meeting and he will get, take time out of that to come here so um, anyway we will have another meeting with uh, am2 so we will believe that uh, we will uh, uh, keep uae as a partner uh, stakeholder with us and then uh, there could be a uh, much more collaborative programs and our artists who are showing interest in that they they could also be benefited from that program and uh, not only but uh, we will go to south asia too india uh, nepal sri lanka bangladesh and uh, bhutan so they they we will uh, uh, try to include those countries too so that we can uh, exchange with each other our exhibition artists exhibitions and science exhibitions and all these things so um, so dr dhan must be here so, so yes he is here so uh, we will ask dr dhan kumar he is vice president of icom uh, uh, nepal and so he will okay. uh, help us in this regard and then uh, to, to definitely nepal will be a stakeholder too so what do you think dr dhan Are you hearing me, Doctor? Uh, Can you hear me? Must... Hello. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. He's here. Yes, sir. Uh, hello, Doctor Dan. Dan. Yeah. Yeah, I'm listening all this. Uh... Oh, please. Okay, no problem. But why? Why? Yeah. Why? Why? We are after uh, to have uh, some. Uh, collaborative uh, program to exchange our exhibitions and may make those exhibition uh, traveling exhibitions and then uh, uh, this uh, organization will be a stakeholder because as uh, uh, that is a mem the partner of uh, icom uh, uh, traveling exhibitions so uh, so, so, so this is uh, Uh, mm -hmm. perhaps manan hasn't mentioned you people but uh, this organization is a partner organization of icom traveling exhibitions uh, international committee so uh, we will have a several stakeholders and we will be successful in doing the, the, these shows and benefiting our uh, uh, artists and scientists and uh, all other thing maybe this uh, this uh, exhibition could be associated with uh small conferences and all this so one day conference or uh, more so um i'm very thankful to uh, manan she uh, she has given us a uh, very uh, comprehensive introduction to our organization and then uh, uh, we believe that uh, this uh, uh, will be posted on uh, youtube this uh, interview will be posted on youtube and that will be available to all uh, our uh, members so they can uh, uh, watch later if they are not here today so uh, with if that I may, uh, I, may add uh, something. Manan, uh, i i i'm so thankful to you and your organization thank you so much Hello? yeah thank you so Hello? much we we very can you hear me yes, yes sir we can hear you Yes, we're very keen to develop actually a specific program to support um, international exhibitions coming from Pakistan and 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 India and and, and the regions you mentioned. Uh, so I'll be very happy to have that dialogue to 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 try and find a way to 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 support um, uh, these international exhibitions. It will be a, a pleasure to work on that with you and everybody here, obviously. Yeah. Uh, as a, actually, Menon, we also have another participant here, Mehreen Hashmi, who has been working yeah, thank, thank, traveling thank exhibition. I'm, I've also worked with her, and I had a great experience. Mehreen, do you uh, want to add something, or would you uh, like to uh, uh, share your thoughts or experiences, or uh, or working with international um, uh, exhibition or traveling exhibitions with Menon? Mehreen? Uh, Mehreen, can you hear me? Okay. 
So uh, we we will we will get back to her later because she is also interested because she has already uh, um, uh, engaged uh, she was engaged in different projects of traveling exhibition. Okay. So I, I invited her so that it would be beneficial for her as well to communicate with you. But I guess later we, she has your email address and every details now. Yes. So yeah. She will. Yeah. Be you know, it's the beginning of a, of a dialogue. You can write to me, yeah. and, and I'll be happy to talk about uh, uh, how we can uh, do like a specific program to support um, collaborations with with your teams. Yeah. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, anyone else would like to share anything? Okay, so I guess uh, if you do have, just share it right now. Otherwise, we are going to now close the session. We are about to end this uh, virtual talk. Um, and um, uh, I have already registered for your uh, um, uh, for your session, which is in May. And I guess I'm Thank also seeing so other messages in the chat box that most of them have already registered for it. So we will be also looking forward for that one, uh, for getting more information. But thank you so much uh, for enlightening and inspiring us with your experiences. It was wonderful to have this conversation with you. Um, and I really look forward to our next interaction soon because I'm really interested to have this. Uh, I'm interested to be a part of this traveling exhibition for 2025, as Dr. Sarah Javed said. So consider me in and uh, wishing you all the best for your future endeavors. And uh, yeah, we'll stay in touch. Thank you so much, Sana. And thank you everyone for uh, attending the session and, and taking part so lively. It was a pleasure meeting you all. And I look forward to meeting with you again. Yeah, pleasure. Okay, nice okay. meeting, Nana. Thank you. Yeah. Same here, Menon. Nice meeting with yeah. all of you. <clears throat> Thank yeah. you. Okay. Take that care. was really beautiful. See you again. Nice meeting, but <laughs> see you again. <laughs> See you again. <laughs>